kids. Uh, Mark Miller here. Uh, how's everybody doing? We are uh, starting a new week. Yesterday I was without power. <coughs> Today I am uh, officially sleep deprived. I got about three hours of sleep. What could go wrong? Um, and I'm starting something brand new. Uh, what could go wrong? So that's what we're going to find out today. Um, let's get into it. Roy's going to join us in a little bit. Uh, until then, let's uh, figure this out. Uh, let's start with a little bit of a spec. I spec'd out the map a while back, and, uh, and it was kind of looking like this. And this is kind of a UI I was um, imagining on each player's screen. So each player would have uh, essentially something functionally equivalent to this. Hold on one second. Let's do that. You can hear me but not see me. Wait. Yeah, just no chat right there. Actually, you know what? Let me go back and I'm going to, because I won't allow you to see me. Let's go to turn off the back panel there so you can see it. So uh, I was kind of imagining an interface like this where we would have different players and we would have a top-down kind of picture of the player and there would be a map, a top-down view of the map. Uh, with the ability to move a player and the ability to track movement, so movement never exceeded more than your allotted move per turn. And uh, and this is kind of the UI I'm looking at. You click and select something and you've got some a pop-up menu or buttons, pop-up buttons of things you can select and do. And that's kind of the idea. Um, from the Dungeon Master's perspective, where we look at the map is important and where the players are on the map is is pretty important. So, um, so the Dungeon Master's got to have a view of that. So uh, I wanted to start work on that today. And, uh, and, and so this is kind of an overview of what that looks like. Um, the other thing I wanted to go into is uh, I wanted to look at online map generators. says, I feel like I haven't been here in forever. Uh, how you doing, Sex Positive? Good to have you here. I think Jetsums didn't play because Sex Positive was still in the middle playing. And if everything's working as expected, the next chat message sent, like if I send the letter S, should trigger Jetsums fanfare. There it is. I just got to duck down low for that thing. Who's in the house? Jetsums here. Welcome, Jetsum. If you missed, uh, by the way, Grover Source's fanfare that occurred last time, uh, that was pretty spectacular. Also, speaking of fanfares, I'm working on a fanfare for uh, Janisku 7. Uh, it's, the, it's the latest. Uh, oh, you saw it. Good. Yeah, it was pretty fun. I'm working on a uh, fanfare for Janisku 7, and uh, it's looking pretty good, but not finished yet. So um, that's kind of where we are with that. So I want to see, I want to find a map generator is what I want to do. And I want to see kind of, you know, let's just kind of open some of these up and look for something. I'm looking for something that gives me not only a map, but I also want to see some data with that map. Um, okay. What's going on here? 3D scene and globe view. Okay. Well. Click the arrow button for options. That. Cultural map. What's 3D scene? Oh, that's kind of fun. I like it. Kind of neat. OK, that's one of them with some tools. OK. And making tools, free, paid, interesting, okay. All right, I'm just going to do a quick 
view of all of these. Bring them up. Take a look at what they've got. That looks cool. <laughs> Jump, little guy! Oh, little guy gets sprayed all over the code, all over the map. Um, that's an even map making tool. Uh, yeah, legendary move. If you want to, uh, if you want to uh, suppress your entrance, legendary move. You do it with a. You want to start with a open bracket, like that, right there. Um, to err is human. To moo is bovine. Legendary moo is in the house. Yeah. So, uh, Justin missed it. Last one you saw was Pyrocats, which was pretty cool, too. Yeah, uh, Grovosaurus is awesome. Maybe we'll see Grovosaurus uh, show up uh, later today. Um, I can't believe, believe I forgot the suppression. No worries. Uh, move, working on a, a really cool, I think a really cool fanfare for Genesco 7. Um, it is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. It is not done yet, uh, but it's, it's feeling good. I'm, I'm starting to feel like uh, maybe I'm I'm uh, kind of specializing in 10 second films or 12 second films. Uh, okay, design battle maps for your next game in minutes. So this sounds good. What I'm looking for is like a an export. Is what I'm looking for. Maybe I should change my search. Let's let's keep looking what we got here. So that was Dungeon Fog. Open that one. Open that. Open that one, that one, and that one. Because what I'm looking for is something that gives me both a beautiful map, ideally, and some data. Because I want to be able to understand things from the uh, from the map maker, map editor. How to make nice looking RGB maps easily? Run it in your browser. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing. I'm just clicking on stuff and doing that. I guess it just fills it up is what's happening. I'm creating pools. Is there any kind of export? Oh, there's an export. Export image, ex import external map. What kind of uh, formats do we have? One page dungeon, donjonbin.ash. What's donjon? Do I have that up here? I do not. Don John, is that enough? Did I get that right? Don John with a J. Let's get some music going in here while we're waiting. What do we got? I'm looking for a fantasy world map. I'm looking for like a dungeon generator. Here we go. Okay. Let's play with this. All right. Like I said, construct. Okay. Download. What is a TSV map? Tab separated values. Okay, cool. I like it. Map scaled for printing. Without secret doors. I think what I actually want to do is I want to generate my map based on the TSV data is what I want to do. That's what I want to do. So let's take a look what the data looks like. Um, where do I want to put this data? Oh! Surely 
Mr. Announcer Bot says, everyone to the lifeboats. Me first. Surly Dev is here. How are you doing, Surly Dev? Jetsam is saying, I think he's not liking the music. Let's switch that uh, genre to techno. Uh, Fabucheros is out there saying, wow. Hey, Fabucheros. Glad to have you with us today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, well, I'm gonna try and generate this map. Let's see what we can do here. Um, don't know where that knot came from. Well, okay, well, we changed the genre, I think. What are we in, funk now? Or this techno. It's funky to me. All right. Um, well, I don't know. I've got this folder out here called analysis. You know, I don't like that. Let's not do that there. Um, let's go ahead into, uh, hold on. Let's go to Dropbox and then I'm going to create a so this is my folder for the um, for the show. Uh, I want to create a uh, show assets. Create a new folder in here called Maps, and inside of there. Now we're going to save this as the Delve of Lampirica One TSP. That's what we'll do. Where's my mouse? Where are your mouse? feels like my mouse is invisible. There it is right there. Nope. Boom. Okay. So we save that. Let's open it up and take a look at it. Getting a lot of flickering on that. Oh wow, it's flickering outside in my dimensions of my hold on. Yeah definitely I've got a driver problem. It settles down after a while. All right. What do we got? Okay. So I'm saying each tab represents a square. And then each collection of text represents what's at that square. That's my take on this. Let's see if we can find some spec for the... Uh, Let me find a spec for the TSV map spec. Let's see if we can find that. I have to say F. Boucheros with a French accent, like F. Boucheros, Boucheros, F. Boucheros. Am I getting that? F. Boucheros. That's about the best I've got. I feel like I should do better than that. I actually had a French accent at one point in my life. I just want to spec on it. We might have to figure it out ourselves. I don't think it's going to be too hard. It seems like it's pretty simple. What's this stuff? F is floor, D is door. Okay. So part of our task is going to be to import one of these maps. I think. So one of our tasks, task one is import the map. Task two is draw the map. Task three is be able to do the, is scale the map and position its view. Right, get a sense of what its scale is. Oh, I'm clicking here to scroll right. There we go, now it's scrolling. Frank Boucher, I got it. I got it, I can do that in French, Boucher. Frank, Frank Boucher. Am I spelling in the, am I pronouncing the first name right? Is it Frank? Excellent. All right. It's not bad. 
I'll take that as a win for today. And the show's over, kids. We got our win. Okay. So uh, I think I want a smaller map to look at to kind of compare to figure out what we, to, to kind of figure these things out. Um, let's go over to here, to our show. Wait, not our show spec. The play, DM player interaction. And let's come in here. And let me do one thing because I want to see if I can get rid of this flickering. Yeah, flickering is happening outside my screen, kids. In other words, I have a screen dedicated to. Hold on, kids. I'll get that background back up here in a second. Did it go away? Nope, it didn't go away. I've got a screen that normally fits like, you know, 2560 across, but I'm only using 1920 of it. And in the area that it's not supposed to be showing anything, it is flickering anytime I move the mouse, uh, like a, uh, a window that used to be there that's not there anymore. Let me see if I can move that top window a bit using my display settings and click apply, see if I get rid of it. I think that got rid of it. Okay, sweet. Yeah, apologies for that. I know that's something only I can see, not you, but it is distracting. All right. So let's go in here and start, let's create a new tab here, new page, new slide, and we'll call this our Don John Import Notes. Rory says, if no one, uh, hold on, what are you saying, Rory? Rory's talking to me now. Let me go take a look at what he's saying. He's chatting. Okay, Rory's not gonna be able to join us on the stream today. Looks like, I'm gonna say no worries. Take care, buddy. I'll say everyone's sad. Sad. Even though they haven't said it yet. Surly Dub says, hi, Rory. We are doing fine without you today. Please take a day off. Really? Okay. All right. We're doing fine so far. We got one win. Jensen says, no. All right, so our import notes. What are we going to do on here? Um, layout. Title only. I really wanted to have some bullet points down here. We'll do that. OK. And um, so D is equal to a door. F is equal to floor. I bet T is a trap or hidden. Well, wait, wait, we need T, U. Whoa, we've got two U's here. What's that? So we have B, L. Oh, I think I know. This is direction. D, L is door on left side. Those are my doors. What's S? S is a secret door. Makes sense. S is a secret. I'm looking at that, and I'm looking right here and here. See the three floors and the two secret doors there and there? Okay. So, and. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Those don't correspond to this, though. Oh, no, wait. It's this. It's just door. Sorry. It's there. Secret door has the dollar sign on it. Are there any secret doors here? I don't see any secret doors here. Okay. Yeah, just regular doors. Hold on, let's go back.
Let's see what we get. Okay, now we got some more data here. that one. So I don't get these too confused. Let's get rid of this. All right. So what do we got? Across the top, we've got a door, I bet, on the left side. And then four floors, five floors next to it in the upper right top part. One, so we're looking right here. One, two, three, four, five, and then, so this says door left, but it's kind of drawn right here. We might change that and actually draw it on the left. Then two spaces down, it says DSL, and two, there it is right there. Whoops, what did I do? Control one, okay. So there's the secret door, door secret left. Okay, so that means S, can be it's equal to secret door. Okay? All right. So this is a secret door on the right, secret door on the right. That's a little bit down into the left of this other secret door we were just looking at. Where is that? So we're here, we're going to one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 down. So we're here, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right here. Is that right? Door bottom? Yeah, I don't, I'm not seeing that. Am I counting these wrong? Maybe I'm counting them wrong. Let's try one more time. From here, maybe it's from here down. Let's try it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 20, 1, 2, 3. Well, let's go. 2, 1, 20, 19, 18, 17. So 17 down from that one, from this one. So 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's where we are right there. And so that's these two right here or these two here. Door bottom, door bottom, and there's another one right there. Door bottom. Okay. Okay, that's cool. What's going on over on the left? So the pieces that are in the room, of the one and two here, are not actually listed here. Do we have any portcullises in here? Does that exist anywhere? I'm assuming it's the letter P, but I don't see it. Okay. Ooh, what about stairs? What's going on with stairs? Do we have stairs shown here? S are stairs. And SU means one stair and up, and SUU means two stairs up. And this means stair down and stair down right here. Uh, hold on, let me zoom in on that so you can see it. Let's get it over on the other side of the screen. So these are my stair up and stair down, stair up right there. These two 
correspond to these two images here. Okay. my take on what this is. Okay. What else? Is that it? DSP looks to me like it's a... Uh, looks like it's a secret door. Right there is a secret door on the bottom. Yeah, I think we've got, I feel like we've got everything else. Okay. Nix, what's a block on this? I need to know what, how big is this? interesting data. What is this thing? Is this thing generated? Oh, interesting. It's got links I can click on it. Okay, so they're just generating that image right there and then loading it up. Okay, so we want to generate that image and then we also want to take this data from here, I think, or alternatively create in something along the same lines for us. Okay. Somewhere along the lines, we're going to figure out the size of this. Should I worry about it now? Is my question. Anyone have access to Diablo random dungeon dungeon generator code? Yeah, it's not telling me what the size of each grid square is. Let's see if we can find an uh, what, what is it? maps. Where's the alien? Asked Surly Dev. We got away this time. Yeah. Um, unless you're asking about um, Fred.
first fry. Okay. All right, so we were saying D and D maps, what uh, square size? What is that? A square is five feet. Okay. I can live with that. That makes me happy. Okay, so let's start generating a map from this. Uh, I want to work in... Um, actually, you know what I want to do? I want to create a brand new app for this. Just to deal with this, the map generation part, I think. And to do that, I'm going to start a new instance of Visual Studio. Here we are. And let's uh, create a new project. Let's do WPF app. And let's stick it somewhere else. Let's throw it over here. And we're going to call this the um, map test. Something like that. Uh, for anyone interested in Azure DevOps, I was recently interviewed. Got a link to uh, John Campbell on a DevOps success story, episode 64. I'm disappointed you didn't mention the UFO on Azure DevOps, legendary mail. Should have done that, Surly Dev. <laughs> Surly Dev says, that's not you. Visual Studio says, hey, Mark, sign in. I'm going to say no thanks. I'm not doing that. I've tried signing in a lot of times. Um, map UI spike. Maybe just call it map spike. DMD map spike. I like it. Fine. All right. All right, no giving away the secret identity. Uh, McZemiak says hello. Hello, McZemiak. Glad to have you with us. Welcome. We are uh, uh, trying to figure out how to generate a, uh, an image of a dungeon using WPF uh, and using this data right here. That's what we're doing. But, uh, you know, I guess it's as good a time as any to let everybody know that, uh... Disclaimer! Mark doesn't know what he's doing! Pretty much true. And here we go, though. Uh, I need something in WPF to... I think, like, the equivalent of a canvas. I don't know. Do I have a WPF canvas? I do! Sweet! I'm just going to use a canvas. Because I'm also using a canvas down in TypeScript, and we got to have draw the map in both places. So, uh, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. We'll do that. Okay. So, let's grab my canvas. Copy that there. Put this here. Got some buttons we threw out there. Only one is holding up, but I bet this is because it's right on top of the other. There's something like a canvas dot left. Let's say that's equal to 22. There we go. There's the other one. All right, so we can position things on here. Um, let's give this a name. I'm going to call this, uh, let's call it Canvas CVS Map. That's what we call it. Like that. Okay. Uh, let's load up that data, see if we can get that data in here. Uh, size component, we need something in here like load map. And let's go ahead and send it a path and a file name. Where is that map? It's out here. What's the um, path? And oh man, you didn't save me, you didn't do that. Let's go to here. 
Downloads. Show in folder. That's what I want. Oh, there's all kinds of clues in terms of what's happening here for uh, for uh, for Janusku 7's fanfare. Okay, here it is right here. Let's grab, let's right click it with the shift key down. Hold on, let me bring this on screen here. Right click with the shift key down and choose copy as path. Come in over here, load map. Like that. Oh, it looks like I've got an extra friends coming in. Okay. So there's our call. This is the wrong place for the map. I just realized we can't put it here. It's not going to get, this is going to go nowhere if we put it here. <laughs> so we're going to cut this. We're going to go out to my assets folder because I can access the assets folder from, and now we're going to create a new folder here. We're going to paste just what we have. That gets our maps in here, right? Oh, oh, come on. Really? You don't have to keep it open. Try again. All right. Gonna kill that one. Yeah. What's going on? It's like my shift key is down. I'm just going to call it that. Which means this becomes this. All right. There's my load map. This is going to be called file name. And let's turn off the caps lock. Next, I need to load the file. And I for totally forget how to do this. It's like in file I.O. or something like that. Uh, C sharp, uh, fastest uh, way to load a text file and get the lines is kind of whatever. Nope. Here we go. Something like this. Is there a single string? I can do that. I could do string builder. Uh, I mean, are they comparing performance? Oh yeah, I don't really need. Well, I guess. Yeah, I don't need speed on this. I just need the uh, the uh, simplest way. <laughs> Let's do that instead. Simplest way, and not F C sharp, just C sharp. Fine. Yeah, I can do that. I work with that. Let's do that. Okay. Win2D for UWP might be doable with XAML islands. Don't know. Depends on how fancy the drawing is needed. It says uh, Astro6. Cody Gorilla is out there. Cody Gorilla, glad to have you with us. Greetings to you, Cody Gorilla. You're on my list for fanfare, Cody Gorilla. I got to do it. All right, so we're going to go read all text. Boom. Whoops. Boom. So then we're going to say, let's do a couple things in here. Let's remove that type qualifier. Oh, did we find a code rush bug? Did it remove it? Look at that. Code rush bug, I think. Remove. Does not work here. If I undo it, and I go here, it still doesn't work. Why not? Let me report a bug, kids, because that's what I'm here for. All right, kids, uh, for everybody else watching, we're dog fooding live, and uh, we're testing Code Rush, which is, sits inside of Visual Studio. And I just executed Code Rush feature, remove type qualifier, remove all, and it did not remove System.io from here, and I'm not sure why. And I think Code it's a bug. Rush. Code rush, and I think it's a bug. So, uh, by the way, folks in the Code chat room, rush. folks in the chat room are saying hi to the uh, developers on the uh, Code Rush team. Um, you guys are doing a good job. Everybody loves your work. Uh, Will's coming in. He's in the house. Will's in the house. Pretty well. 
Welcome. Fasten your seat belts, check your airbags. Make sure your seat belt is in the locked and upright position. It's going to be a bumpy ride. I thought I had a check your airbags button in here somewhere. I don't think I have one. I got a Yikesters. Yeah, it's kind of sad. I don't have one. Wow. Just yes. wow. Yeah. The training wheels are off. Yeah, training wheels are off. All right, so back to what we were doing here. What is it? System.io. Sorry, uh, developers uh, on the Code Rush team. Uh, this is supposed to work and it's not. So I'm going to uh, mark this as a bug and I'm going to send you. Check your airbags. Okay, somebody got the check your airbags. Why don't I have a button for it? I don't know. All right, you guys are all better than me, clearly, at running the show. Uh, so let's set this over to bug. Uh, remove type qualifier. Not working. Uh, and uh, send that issue out. There it is. I sent the log files as well. Maybe we'll be able to figure out what's going on with that. What's a new project I just created? Yeah, definitely repeatable. Uh, just out of curiosity, if I take that out, and put this up here, are we still good? Still good. I'm going to undo this a second, just for the purposes of bug hunting on this. I'm going to try a couple things. One is I'm going to close the file, reopen it, see if that makes any difference or any impact on it. And I'm also going to reload if this doesn't have any impact on it. See if it's a state-related problem. Nothing happened. Maybe it's a reproducible issue. Closing it down. Let's restart up Visual Studio again. It's not in my history. Huh. It's not on the taskbar. Let's bring this up. Uh, that's the one I want to open. Yeah, maybe it's a state-related bug. If it works this time, I'm going to call it a state-related bug. Oh, I got some flickering. The flickering is due to my driver. Pretty sure about that. Remove type qualifier. Still not working. Okay. Let's do one more thing. Let's compress this whole thing. So I can attach that out and the devs can look at it if we've really got something reproducible here. Okay. So we'll just manually do this by hand. Okay, system IO. How you doing, Will? button for airbags. You guys could bring it up, but I cannot, apparently. You'd think I would have that. You know what time it is? Maybe it's time to get back to some coding. Okay. Let's go back to some coding. Shall we, kids? All right. Um, Will, were you here for Grovosaurus last time? Will, I forgot to call you. Oh my God, I apologize. Uh, I was going to call you and uh, I totally blew it. Um, got a couple errors here on that compress. I think I'm going to, what did I not get? The lock, this, this. I'm okay with not getting those. All right, you're forgettable. I'm sorry, buddy. Um, in fairness, I've been juggling things like crazy. Um, so that's me juggling like crazy. Uh, I will make it into another a second attempt to try to get, get out to you. Um, we'll, let's connect via um, Skype and uh, we'll try to set this up one more time. Today is tough. Uh, tomorrow is better, I think. And Friday is tough too. Yeah, so we'll do our best uh, to, to uh, chat chat soon. Okay. So here's the, uh, these are the text lines. What I want to do is I want to come out here and I want to say dot split and I wanted to pass in a, uh, 
like a slash hit, something like that, and uh, and see if then what that would give me. Then assign that to my local lines. These are my lines. Then I love trash. Oh, Grover! Oh no, it's Grover! Grover, where did you? I mean, Grover, that's not Grover. That was Oscar. If I can't name him, I guess it might as well be okay that he's gone. That was Grover Soros, kids. Um, Grover Soros. A little crazy there, kids. Can you tell me how to get how to get to Sesame Street? Ask Grover Soros. Fitting. Okay, uh, then I want to say, like, for each line, do, I don't know, load line? I'm thinking. And we'll pass in the line. And then uh, I think we want to do something like reset map state. I get re reset map like this, and we're gonna, I don't know what I'm going to do here yet, but we're going to we're going to do something there. And then we're going to do load line. There it is, right there. And then we're going to say uh, line dot split into tabs like that. And then we're going to call these rooms, I think. Spaces may be better. Spaces five by five, like that. And then we're going to say, uh, we're going to go through each one of those for each space. And I think what we're going to do here is we're going to call it something called reset line. I don't know what these things are going to do yet, kids. Don't be mad at me. All right, there's a reset line right there. And then we're gonna say uh, load line. Or load space, I mean. And then we're gonna pass it to space. Okay. Now. Um. I'm going to change these up just a bit. It's going to be load new space. And this is going to be uh, load new line. And I'm going to call this on new line like this. That's what I think I'm going to do. And inside uh, load new space, I'm going to say on new space. OK. So now with this, I can come in and do things, some things to like take, track its position. Which five by five cube am I in? So uh, let's create a new integer here. We're gonna call this uh, row. And another one we're gonna create called columns. So what I'm thinking, and in reset map, I'm gonna say uh, row is equal to zero and uh, column is equal to zero. Although I think this may not be so necessary here because guess what? When I get to a new, line, I'm going to say column zero is there. And when I, oh wait, wait, and I'm going to say row plus plus. And when I get to uh, a new space, I'm going to say column plus plus. Okay. So when we get to here, our row and column is going to point to the right spot. Then what I think we want to do is this. We want to do something simple, start off really simple here. So we're going to say if space equals floor. So just if it's a floor, I want to go out to my canvas and I want to say children.add. Oh, sweet. Now I know what I'm going to put inside my reset map also. I'm going to put children.clear. Okay, so now I'm going to, in my add call, I'm going to add, I think I can do a new rectangle. Like that. Let's, uh, semicolon, let's selection increase there. Let's introduce a local. And we're going to call this uh, 
call this Git floor, like this. We need to figure out what the spacing width is going to be. Uh, um, width five by five. Or wait. Pixels per five feet. Okay, I don't care that. And for every five feet, let's do about, I'm saying about uh, maybe 20 pixels. It's weird, I'm looking right at my fingers, I'm saying that's about 20 pixels there, what I'm imagining and scaling it. It's weird, I know. Uh, so we'll say about 20 pixels per five feet, like that. And, uh, dot width what does it need what type is width clearly not an int it's a double oh 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 that's my problem okay so now we're happy There, floor dot uh, fill. Whoops, fill equals uh, new solid color. Wait, new solid color brush. And from colors dot red. All right, so we're gonna put the floor, make the floor red. There's my get floor. We're gonna add that element now. We want to next say uh, canvas dot set left element comma and we want to go to column times pixels for five feet and we want to say uh, column dot set top element row pixels for five feet. That's what we want to do. Okay, and then we add the element. Could this actually freaking work? Just with that little bit of code right there. All right, let's see if it works. Um, <laughs> got it, we're loading it up. Uh, what do I need to do? I need to make sure that the height and width of the canvas is big. It looks like it is big enough to show it. I don't know, let's try it. Let's just run it, see what we get. Might be a little crazy to not even step through it. Really? We're, we, we're stopped on the very first one? I'm pretty sure that file is there. We were just looking at that. Weren't we? Nope, it's not there. All right, I believe you now. What, no maps? Wait. Oh, hold on. Yeah, I've got the wrong folder. I'm sorry. I thought I had changed that and updated that, but I had not. Here's where we are. That's where we want to be. Try again, okay. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's create a uh, map folder. 
the cool thing about using um, this folder is I've got Dropbox set up to it, which means my um, my Dungeon Master can uh, put things in the same place, and we can have these maps there. Whoa, I can do brushes.xxx. You're right. Thanks for the reminder. Let's go do that. Better, arguably better, because I'm not creating something new every time. I'm just reusing this. So there we go. We'll do that. So there's brushes are red. Um, okay. Now I want to come in here, load map. That's going to give just the file name. And now in here, I want to do uh, path.combine. We want to go with our. Um, Map folder name, is that what I called it? Right, right. Okay. Uh, I got a problem here. System.io. Ah. Okay. All right, now let's try to run it. I just want it to work. I want to be like, oh, look at this, kids. Hold on. It's on the other monitor. But I'm going to call that uh, success with like two lines of code. Where's our original file? Let's go look at the original file and compare them. It's still open or not? Yeah, let's just open it from here. Come on, mouse. Where are you? There you are. Do these look the same? Does that look similar to this? Yeah, I'm gonna say it looks the same. Cool. Now we're missing our doors, but I think you're getting the picture of what we can do here. I want the canvas to change its size based on its contents. Does it do that automatically? Maybe it does. Then, let's just, then I think I want to put this in a view box. I need to be able to zoom, scroll. Is there a zoom box out there? It is, looks like a third party, what do we got here in code bro? project? Killer! Viewbox? Yeah, I, thought, I was thinking Viewbox did that, but I think it kind of did it automatically. Let's stick it in a view box and see what happens. We should be able to use hot reload to just do it right now. So we'll take this uh, and we'll embed selection. Do I have a view box as an option here? I think this is a feature request. Hold on kids. Let me pump this out here to the devs. No log files are needed. Here's the issue. And uh, so kids, I'd like to embed this in, as, in a view box. I think that's useful. And uh, when I hit the embed selection option, I don't see a view box here. I think we should add it. It's pretty much painless to do it. Uh, also, I think these should be in alphabetical order. Uh, is what I think. And if we want to do an, a most recently used, it should be separated with a line. So the, whatever our most recently used up at the top, like the top three, and then everything else in alphabetical order. Okay. So instead, I'm just going to cut it, and then we're going to type in VB like this. 
lowercase vb. Does that work? There's my view box. And uh, we'll call this VBX uh, map. And inside here, we'll paste our canvas map out here again. Now, because I cut that and redid it and, and did the hot reload, uh, we're kind of left with this right here, so we can't actually test. So let's run it again. And let's go, uh, let's see what other brushes I've got. Oh, is this a bug? What's Codrush going to do here? I just clicked on brushes.red. Let's take like kind of an orange, lower saturated color like, uh, like that. Okay, that's cool. See that kid? <laughs> Make sure it's the right name first. Feature goes embed in view box. Didn't I get it the right one, the view box? Make sure it's the right name first. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Phew, that was the right name. Okay, so I guess we're okay uh, with whatever we did. All right, so, um, okay, so there's our new fill fl on the floor. Let's run it again. It's now in the view box, which means I think it's gonna make it fit. Let's see what happens. Uh-oh, nothing. Nothing. How do we break it? Is my view box not big enough? Could that be the problem? Oh, yes, I've got to set the size of the canvas. I bet that's my problem. Because it doesn't know how big the canvas is, so the canvas doesn't, I think that's my problem. Let's do this. Let's, uh, let's reset. And then right after we load the map, I want to say CVS map dot width is equal to, so at this point I should be on the very last space in line. So it should be, the width should be equal to column times uh, pixels per five feet and uh, height is equal to row times pixels per five feet. And there might be a plus one in here. We'll see what we get. Does this work? That worked. Okay, cool. Let me bring it over so you can see what we're looking at. Sweet. Okay, so does that mean now, yeah, no matter what size it is, we're seeing it. Oh, but it looks like I need a plus one on the multipliers. If I look really carefully, I'm losing the edge pieces right there. Okay, so let's add a plus one down here. Select the whole thing, just hit the paren key, uh, and then do a plus one. Same thing down here, select it, plus one. Go eat lunch and come back to much progress. We didn't write much code, Jetson. It was crazy. It's this much code, which I really love, actually. And our methods are nice and tiny. So we're, you know, following some guidelines of good design here in our first initial seconds. So there it is right there now. So we've got this. That's looking good to me. Now, I also kind of want to be able to zoom as well. Like, I want to be able to zoom into a portion, but uh, I'm going to say not bad for right now. Note to self, Jetsam, don't go to lunch. You guys are making me hungry. Okay. So I don't know. I think this is workable so far. I got a slight um, kind of, you know, line between these pieces, but we could fix that by uh, just adding a pixel to the size of the, um, to the, to the size of these, uh, getting the floor piece right here. So just say plus one there, like that. I think that would solve it. And here it comes, bring it over, it did not solve it. Oh wait, it kind of did, but when it's small, you can start to see when it's small. I guess that kind of makes sense because of for scaling reasons. I'm okay with that for now. So not bad. Okay, next we gotta figure out um, the other pieces, the other elements, which are a little trickier. <laughs> we also kinda gotta figure out rooms. We kind of got to reverse engineer. We got to do optical character recognition, essentially, 
well, not character recognition, optical shape recognition to figure out what rooms are here. <laughs> Let's go back out here. Wait, not there. Let's go back out to where we were. So we've got different rooms here. Are the rooms numbered? Yeah, rooms are numbered. So this room is numbered eight. But why do I have this room number? Oh, is this 11 and that's 14? I think that's 14. Could that be true? One, two. Yeah, three, four. Where's five? Five. Where is six? see seven up there. Where's six? Looks like these are not in a great order. How do I find out what room number we're talking about? I do not see an algorithm yet for determining what room numbers are there, which means we are going to have to kind of figure it out ourselves. Yeah, I don't see room six. Oh, there's, wait, there's room six. Yeah, yeah, five, six. Okay, so six is right here. Then there's seven, eight, nine, right there, right behind me, right there, nine. Yeah, 10, 11. Yeah, so those are just there, but they're not in the data we sent. In other words, when we go out here, there's no room number. Right? This is one of the rooms, and there's no room number. Okay, so I think we're going to write some code for figuring out our rooms next. I don't know. I feel like it's important to say. Have we made this clear yet? Disclaimer! Mark doesn't know Jack! That's right. I don't know Jack. That's right. And yes, that's right. This is a family show, but sometimes there's swearing on this show. Excuse your face, sir. That's an example of swearing right there. Here's another example. Mother of Pearl. All right, let's figure this out. Let's try and see if we can do some optical recognition of the floors. The doors. What about the doors? I think we're just going to recognize rooms by a stack of floors together. Some space bigger it's got to have at least, it can't be a prime number, right? It's got to be at least have a factor in it. It's got to be at least something greater than two multiplied by something greater than two. So we got to start collecting those. Um, so uh, is this the best way to do it? Is it better to set up an array and look at the array afterwards? I think it's better to set up the array and do it afterwards. That's what I think it is. Um, how big is the array? I think we find out after we process it. So I think we're going to create the array here. And then we're going to process. So we build the map first. And after we're done building the map, then we're going to build the array. Then we're going to go through, fill the array. Then we're going to analyze the array. So I think at this point, we've got something like we, uh, some code that's going to say build uh, map array, like this. We're going to pass in column and row, like that. And uh, I think we got the, is it the same thing or no, no, no? Gosh, this is the tough thing. Yeah, I don't really like doing this. Well, 
let's hold off on that in a second. Yeah, I'm weighing like a bunch of different ways to solve this, and none of them I'm liking. Um, but I'm playing with... Here's what I'm playing with. Okay, let's move those to their own files. So I'm basically playing with this idea of collecting this data and then processing the data at the end. Um, because I have a feeling this data is going to be useful uh, elsewhere. So I'm going to create a new list of what's on the clipboard. Call it spaces, like this. Um, and actually, I don't really need to construct it here. Uh, but I do need to call it in reset map. So there's my spaces. And then simply when I thing. Um, let's add a parameter floor. This is going to be the element. The UI element. And let's make it a type UI element. So reorder the parameters. I also need to specify the type. Shoot, I had the wrong thing on the clipboard. Okay. So 
now I'm kind of feeling this might be something we use later. So now we're going to come in here and say um, the type is the next piece here. So map space type dot floor. Okay. Good. So now we know where everything is. Next, now we can come in here build map array. Uh, let's see, we need a Do that. It does not want me to be able to do that. Oak spaces. Is that what I called it? D and D space. Space. Yeah. I should rename that to D and D space. Now I think I can do this. It's been a while since I've worked with arrays. Um, was it a comma? Maybe it's, is it this? Is it a comma here? It's really dumb. It says lunch is for losers. Go keto. I'm like eating all the time, guys. I cannot stop. I think about it though. You're inspiring. You're inspiring me, Surly Dev. Well, then it's suggesting you can use list of T so you can build as you go. Um. Is that correct? Is that working? That looks like that might actually compile. I'm not getting any big complaints on it here. Okay, and then now what I want to do is I want to go through my spaces. That. And then I want to basically come into my array and I want to say array of space dot column comma space dot row is equal to space so that should that should build it and I think what I want to do is like break here and just kind of look at the data see what it looks like and see what looks right excuse me Column always going to start at plus one. Let's go see what's going on with column here. Column is zero in here. A new line is hit the first time we do it, so we immediately go to row. So we're indexing by one. Load new space comes in on new space column. Yeah. Uh, so new question, do I want to make these negative one when I start? So they are initialized to zero base indexes? I think I do. How does that change everything that's happened so far? Let's see what happens. I think we might solve a problem here. Yeah. So column is just yeah, so I think it's simply just that we add one here and here. 
that makes sense now. I feel like everything else was good to me. Let's try it again. Okay. Got a bunch of nulls on the first row. That might be true. Second row's gotta have something. Null across the board? What is happening here? Speaking of food, I have some lovely, lovely fatty pork belly in the slow cooker that has been in since lunchtime. Yeah, slow cooking is awesome. It's like the, uh, the friend. Not roll column, did I mess those up? I'm trying to always have my columns first. Column row, column row. Where's my mistake? Did I make one in here? Column row. I feel like I'm okay. So these are columns. Wait, oh, maybe you're asking if I'm looking at the data wrong. But these are the columns across. Oh, okay. So column zero, column one. Yeah, I see what you're saying. The left side is column. You're right, I was looking at those wrong. But still, I should see something by now. Column three. There should be something. Do we simply, I don't even get this. We should, we, I think we need a breakpoint there instead. So here we are at row zero, column 14. Well, there's definitely something there. Sixty-six, wait, fourteen zero. What's just happening? Oh, that's the dimensions of it. Okay, got it. So I think we're okay. I think the data is okay. Let's just let's get out to here one more time. Look at the data one more time. We so we know that we're at, at fourteen, column fourteen, row zero. Okay, so we have something there. Okay, next we, uh, after building the map array, if we want to analyze the map array. In fact, I kind of feel like I want to return this. Like this better. Be more useful for testing, right? To break these things apart. Find rooms is what I want to call this. Okay. Can I get the length of just one dimension? Nice, look at that. Boom. All right. Get length of, let's see what these turn out to be here. I think this is going to be num columns. 
and this is going to be num rows. That's, that's my guess. Like that. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Let's see what data we get. Clear that one. Oops. What do we got? 66. Rows is 59. Columns is 66. That looks right. Rows is 58. Yeah. Good. Sweet. All right. So we got that. All right. Next. We need to look at a column at a time is what we need to do. Gotcha, Will. Usually things are laid out in row columns. So if you flatten out to single dimensional array, for example, you iterate by row. Yeah, you know, I used to do that. And then at some point in my life, I decided, you know what? I really like mapping my columns and rows. I like them matching the, uh, I like them matching the X and Y convention. In other words, my columns correspond to my X position and my Ys correspond to my rows. That way I don't mess them up. But yeah, I get you on that. I totally get you on that, doing rows first. I'm going to continue going along this path, and we'll see how, how much trouble we get into. I think this is, if there's a place we're going to get in trouble, it's in this function right here. Because we kind of want to, you know, you want to approach it one way or the other. But actually, it doesn't really matter. We can uh, analyze one column at a time. So let's do this. So we're going to say, um, we're going to create a, uh, an iterator here. For column from zero, less than num columns. And then inside of here, we're going to do something that's kind of similar, but it's going to be from row to num rows, like that. OK, so that's our iteration. And I almost think here we are an analyze column. <laughs> I think it looks like that. So the, the way I'm working the logic out for this is I'm going to find a bunch of room segments, right? Anything that's more than two, two or more characters long. That could be a hallway too, though, right? So I'm going to find those. And then I'm going to, um, hold on, collect those. And then I'm going to look for neighboring segments is what I'm going to do. And if I can find neighboring segments, that are the same dimensions, I'm going to call that a room, or it could be part of it. Yeah, they could join up with the room, and the room could be could be non-rectangular. <laughs> Should I do that? Should I support non-rectangular rooms? Maybe in the first iteration, no. We'll only support rectangular rooms. What's going on over here? Are all these rooms rectangular? They are. All of these look to be rectangular. There. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, that's what we did. Hold on, we're talking about performance now. <laughs> Interesting, Will. So Will's suggesting that uh, not, he's 
he's noting that we don't need super optimization here because we're dealing in UI time with small amounts of data. But laying out uh, in the order accessed is more CPU cache friendly. Okay. You'd be surprised at the performance difference. Try creating a perf test sometimes. It's an order of magnitude difference in time to process if you're going in the opposite order than in memory. Lots of cache line invalidations. Not a big for what you're doing, just mention it. Yeah, but, uh, you know, good that you mention it. Um, and I don't know if you know this, kids, but... Bill Bennett rocks! It's true. He's awesome! Yep. He's awesome. 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 The chat room is on fire! Thanks, Will. Those are great contributions. All right. Let's see what we got here. Um, uh, shoot, I need map array in there. All right, let's throw it in there. And now I've got a segment. Well, I think I need a new class for my segment. Uh, we're gonna call this a room segment. Like this, and it is going to have a uh, start position. What are we doing? Are we looking at this? Have I turned this whole thing upside, you know, 90 degrees? Find segments in column. Yeah, so it's gonna have a start row. So it's gonna have a start row. I hope I'm not blowing anybody's mind the wrong way, right, by turning everything sideways. So it's gonna have a start row, and it's gonna have an end row, like that. That's my room segment. Let's uh, put a constructor that initializes those. There's my room segment. Let's move type to file. Let's jump back, jump back. Find room segments in column. New list of what's on the clipboard. Room segments. Yes, I'll take that. And then down here, I'm gonna say return. Room segments, hit the code rush key, convert to function. That's gonna do that for me. Thanks, code rush. And now, um, here's what we're gonna add to these. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through and we're gonna add and, and we're gonna find find those segments and add them together. And we're going to add them to the list of room segments. The list of room segments that come out of here. Uh, room segments in column, like that. Let's uh, make this explicit. Because I want to have a list of list of room segments. So once again, new list of what's on the clipboard, like that. And we're going to call this um, Uh, all room segments, I think. I think that's it. Okay. So all room segments is there. Now we're going to come down to all room segments. And we're going to say all room segments. Or do we want all room segments to be a an array instead. And I'm okay. I'm okay with it being a list of lists. All right, so our segments dot add um, room segments column like that. Okay. Now let's figure out how whether we are. Um, in a segment or not. So we're going to say in in the floor, set that equal to false. Um, then we're going to say if map array of column, comma, row, is not null, the 
if the map array column row is not null, then we want to say hold on, I want to say this. I want to say in floor column is false. If not in floor column, then in floor column is now true. And I want to say last segment start is equal to row. Okay, let's declare this right here. Set it equal to negative one because, you know. So if we're not in a floor column, then we track it. Else, if we are in a floor column, then we're out of a column. And we know that now we've got the ending, the data we need to be able to create a new room segment. So we're going to say room segment dot add. New room segment. We're going to pass in the start row. last segment start and row, the end row, which is the current row. <laughs> We've got a slight problem with the logic though. And uh, the problem kind of occurs here. So as we're going along, we're saying, okay, I've got a segment here. I've got a segment here, and this one says, I've got a segment here, okay? But these are the same, right? They're, they're part of the same room, it's just the part above is not that same room. So I want to take just this portion of that segment and keep going. Similarly, if I have a room, let's see if I can find a room that's kind of like here. Uh, if you imagine I'm processing, say so just imagine I'm processing in this direction, right? So I've got a really long line here and a subset of that line here. And then I got another really long line and another subset, another subset, and then down here. As long as I have a subset, wow, yeah, non rectangular rooms are going to be a little tricky to get. But I think I can do this. I just have to, it looks like I have to look for the subset as I'm analyzing across and comparing those segments. Okay, so anyway, we're, we're right now we're just getting the segments. Uh, okay, in four column is false. Now, I think I actually, I think I need one last thing I have to do. And that is at the end, if I'm still in a floor column, I've gone all the way out to the very end. And in that case, what I want to do is I want to do this, add it last segment start, but we're going to say, num rows minus one. And I think that's what I need to do. I feel like that's it. So that gets me my segments. All right. Let's uh, verify we're getting segments. And what I want to do now 
is um, So unraveling this, this is going to be column right here. And uh, then we're going to come in here and we're going to say all room segments of column. I'm feeling like I'm starting to get lost here. Um, yeah, just a little bit too challenging of complexity, I think, for me to do. Uh, Now I want to come in and show the room segment is what I want to do. Um, Now, I need to get its position. So it, it's, uh, we're gonna say canvas, dot set left. What is not, why is it doing not have IntelliSense here? Why does it not get what room segment is? <laughs> Still nothing? I thought room segment had stuff, doesn't it? It does not, okay, that's why. Okay, there we go.
All right, let's just offset this a little bit. That might be five pixels. So the width is equal to 10 of this character, and the height is going to be equal to uh, room, room segment. end row minus start row plus one <laughs> let's do one more thing when we collect segments let's ignore anything that's not at least two at, at least uh, two um, characters long so we're going to say if last segment start, uh, is it possible for a equal row? It's correct. I think it's this is the filter. So if it's just row plus one, is that true? It's going to be, I think it's just, hold on, I'm totally, I've got to at least swap these around here. So row has got to be greater than last segment start plus one, because we're no longer in it. I think that's going to do it. So that's going to uh, only collect segments one, two, tall, or greater. OK. that enough? Have I taken care of everything? I got the height. I said the top of the left, the height is this. Oh, I didn't multiply this. Times pixels per five feet. I think that's got a shot of uh, showing us our room segments. Let's just run it and see what happens. What do we get? Is it crazy? Is it messy? Okay. Drawing one too many on the segments. But it looks like it's getting them all. Let's let's fix the draw the height. The height calculation is wrong. Really? I thought that plus one, I was almost certain of that. Oh, because we're our end row. All right, let's redo it. Run it again. I'm a big fan of just running it and it working, by the way. I love that. Okay. It's not bad. Uh, if you're blue and red colorblind, this might be making you a little crazy. Let's change these colors. Um, let's make this definitely lighter. Say okay to that. And whoops, oh, because we're running. Try again. Let's do some twitch purple here. Something like that. Is that light enough? Maybe in there. Okay, let's see what we got. A little better, easier to read. Bring it over to the monitor, main monitor. Okay, we are on our way to figuring out the rooms. What's remarkable is these rooms that we've collected don't have any problems in terms of, they're all exactly the same size, left to right. Why was that not the case here? What are, are we missing something? We're missing doors that they have spacing around them. 
the doors, I think it's the design of this algorithm to give us, this is gonna be easy. Holy cow. Right, everything is a square because we don't, we're not looking at that other noise from the other pieces, the, the connecting doors, right? Or whatever, actually, why am I not sure what that is right there? What's the ring of the map have? Nothing there. Sweet. Okay, so now we gotta go look for adjacent matching segments as we go through. And start collecting those. Okay. So the way I think I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna, as I go through, I'm gonna collect, I'm gonna hit the first uh, column right here. I'm gonna essentially take this one and say, okay, we're gonna have something called like orphans from last line. And we're gonna add it to that, or orphans, yeah, orphans from previous orphans. Then, I'm gonna go forward and look at the next set, and are there any matching up with the previous set of orphans? If there are, I'll add, promote those to a set of rooms. And then any previous orphans that weren't found matches, I will remove. That's how we're gonna do it. So let's write that code before I forget what I just said. Um, okay. So showroom segments, that's, that was great. That totally tells us what's going on there. Um, find rooms, add room segments. We've added all the room segments. Do I want... Yeah, I'm gonna get something similar to this is what I'm gonna do. So a room is going to have a list of room segments, I think. That's what I think. Okay. The room is gonna ultimately have These are all gonna be matching segments. So ultimately gonna have a, uh, a height and a width associated with it. Oh, I'm really liking the data on the the uh, on this, how this is turning out. Where we're going to get, it's, it's making it so much easier to um, to find this here. So we've got find rooms, show room segments. Then we're going to come in and say find rooms, all room segments like that. And those orphans I call them waiting segments candidate segments I'm not really liking any of these names but we'll go with that right there um okay I don't think we need any of that code candidate segments are here we also need a uh, new list of uh, rooms. Nice variable name. 
I was expecting you to uh, chime in on that one, Will. You think so? I don't know. All right. Then we're going to call this uh, Found Rooms. No, 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 no. In progress rooms. And then we're going to have another one, found rooms. So as we, basically as we go from candidate to find matching candidate segments, we're going to add, create in progress rooms. And then candidate segments we are going to clear, and I'm pretty sure we're clearing it here. At the end of the loop, naming is hard. It is. I'm pretty sure we're clearing it there. And then we come back in and we collect. Is that right? Is that right? No, no, no. We can't collect. No. I almost feel like we need two of these. Oops. I think this is what it looks like. I think that's what it looks like. So we're just kind of shifting. Each time we go through, we're shifting everything one to the left. So now, current line segments, we can kind of add these in. But we kind of, so we're going to say, but we first want to check to see if they match any of the last line segments. So I want to say, hey, if uh, segments match, actually, I think I want to do this instead. Get matching segment from my last line segments to room segment <laughs> and that is going to return a room segment I think or I think I'm liking this a little bit better. So if the room is not null, if all the rooms are rectangular, there's just the max of the top of the current and previous se segment and the min of the bottoms. Well, it's simpler than that, Will. Um, it's actually even, it's because the, all the, the way these rooms are, appear to be generated, um, here I'll show you. Let me uh, comment this out for a second we'll, and we'll run it one more time. Um, every single room is exactly rectangular. I thought we would have problems like I was talking about before, but it's not the case. Every room is rectangular. So there's no need to do max or min. They're all going to match. We don't have to worry about anything crazy going on here in this with the maps generated here. They're all rectangular. And I'm totally happy about that. It makes this, this part that we're writing uh, much easier. Okay, so let's uh, stop running there. Yeah, kind of cool, isn't it? It's a nice, I love the data. The data's coming back and I'm happy. So now we're gonna say in progress rooms dot add, and we're gonna add um, room. These are my in progress rooms. Okay, 
Now, at some point, we need to go through every in-progress room. Actually, maybe not that. Let's do something different here. Can I do uh, that? Do I have reverse for loop yet? I don't think I do. Count backwards because I'm going to remove elements from the list as we do it. No, yeah, no circular rooms. Sweet. Exactly, no circular rooms. So now what we have to do is we have to uh, remove any rooms that are finished. So now it's basically like this. If in progress room dot right column is less than column, then we want to remove it. Whoops, I want to do, I want to do this. This room, equal to in, in progress rooms of I. So now, If it's less than column, then we want to say in progress rooms dot, uh, what is it? Delete, remove, remove at I. Like that. We need to declare right column. Uh, I said it was auto implemented, but it's going to be, it's going to have a getter on it. I'm going to make it calculated for now. Um, Please help me out. How do I do this in link where I want to find the biggest number out of all these segments here? So I'll, I'll give you, maybe coders can help me on this. For each room segment in segment, if uh, this dot, um, shoot, shoot, no, never mind. Ignore my question because there's something else I need to do. When I create a room, I need to specify its starting column. Let's go do this. Clear method. Pop that in here. And here we're going to say new room. And we're going to pass in last line segments dot. Do I have column in? Wait. Last line segments of zero. The first one dot column. I don't have a, it's column. I need a column here. Should the room segment have a column associated with it? I think it should. Okay, let's declare a property with initializer. Okay, so I'll implement these. Better. Okay, so now the room segment's got a column in it. Now we're gonna pass column into room so we know what column it starts on.
Okay. Right column is going to be equal to start column plus uh, segments dot count. I think it's close to that. It could be off by one. Minus one. That's what I think it is. Okay, so now if my right column is less than column, then we can remove it. So removing any rooms that are finished. Can I just extract this into something that's pretty simple? But I want to move them over to found rooms. Okay, so these are my found rooms as I'm going through here. So getting the room, so we need to actually go in to get room and see if this works. Last line segments and the room, so. Test Ramo. All right. So we wanna see if these two segments line up. If anything in this last set of segments lines up with this one. So I wanna basically go in like this. For each room segment, if room segment, uh oh, we got the wrong. If room segment equals compare room segment. And uh, I need a an op equals comparison operator for this, for room segment, I think. <laughs> yeah, and no, I'm not gonna do that. I am instead going to say, uh, So do that, matches. Then I'm gonna declare it. Return this dot start row equals cover room segment dot start row and uh, this dot end row equals compare room segment dot end row. D and D map happy. So that's going to be what my matches is going to do. So if the room segment matches it, I do not have to delete. Worry about deleting old segments because that gets reset right here when I switch to current line segments. And it looks like I'm not actually setting this yet. So if, if we don't get a room back, then we want to say current line segments dot add. And we want to add our uh, room segment. I think I'm getting a little lost here, to be honest. I'm like, is this really right and going to work? We'll see. Um, so now I'm collecting my current line segments. I pass them off to my last line segments. I then check to see if this current piece is, matches it and get room. That's what I'm writing right now. 
<laughs> so if they t the two match, then we need to create a new room. That is my room. And then we're going to say room.segments.add. Uh, room segment, that's the first one. Then I also need to add, wait, what's happening here? That's what I need to do. And then I also need to add, um, this right here. Janisku7, I don't know if you heard the news or yet or not, Janisku7. Your fanfare is not done, but I have not been slacking off. Um, I actually worked on it, and it is getting better. I think you're going to really like it. Um, but it's not done, and I don't know if it's going to be done tomorrow or not, because I'm like, my whole day is like, in terms of uh, stuff that I've got to do. In fact, I need to wrap up this show soon so I can get onto all of that. Um, but, uh, so, so good news, Matt. It's good news is it's gorgeous so far, but not done. Um, and uh, bad news is it's not done. Okay, so now we've added these two room segments, and then now I think we can simply return it like that. And then down here, we're going to return null. And there, I think, is get room. I'm almost feeling like this is going to work. Um, kind of wish Rory were here at this point to be like, uh, wait, Mark, you forgot this thing or that thing. So now let's follow this through. So finding our rooms. And are we adding the rooms? Remove finished rooms. We're not actually removed finished rooms. Oh, no, wait, we, we add them here, right? So it's not really remove finished rooms. It's like uh, just finished rooms, I think, is what it is. And that's going to take things out of in-progress rooms and move them into finished found rooms. Now. Forgot something. Bot is Roy Light. Roy wouldn't be here at this time. He would be going home. Yeah. Bot is Roy Light. Fair. Um, we're not lined up over here in the smoke. I gotta go move this over. I think I should change my my position. Should I dare I do it? Dare I move everything over to the side? I think I'm gonna do it like right now. Hold on. Let's do this. This could be asking for a lot of trouble. But I'm now moving myself to the right. Boom. So we're lining up here. Then I gotta take the bottom third. Let's look at my transform. I'm gonna edit the transform so I only move the X position. Uh, let's jump it out to what, 50, 75, 70, 90, 100. Getting closer, 140, 150. 160. It's not bad. All right, close. Now let's go into get our active viewers. Move that over as well. We're going to go to about 650. That was close. Sweet. And then let's get our followers and move that. It's about 230. That was pretty close. 226. All right. So now if we switch to another scene. Awesome! What? It didn't move it? 
something. Oh yeah. I think I gotta change this on another location because of this. I gotta find the original one and do it, not the one on there. All right, well, I'm not gonna make you wade through that again. Watch that again. We're gonna go back over here instead. <laughs> um, okay. Back over here to the rooms. We're finishing the rooms. Find the rooms at the very end of find rooms. We're going to return found rooms. All right. Dare we test this? Dare we put our reputations on the line? Show rooms. Oops, that was not right. All right, so show rooms. Let's create that. We dare, we date. Okay. So now, let's just set a breakpoint here. See what our data looks like. We're looking for about like 15 rooms is what we're looking for. Wait, what's null? Segments is null. Okay, my bad on that. One more time. I got 44 rooms. You said I got a new listen to my SoundCloud after I record the new sound. I listened to your SoundCloud yesterday in the Genesis 7. Genesis 7 recorded the sound for me, so I'm using it in uh, his uh, fanfare. Um, well, that's way more than I thought I was going to get. Got some two, bunch of two segment rooms. You know what I think I'm doing wrong? Hold on. I think I'm not looking through my found rooms and adding the, I mean, my in-progress rooms. I think that's my problem. Hold on. In progress rooms. Yeah. My problem is in here. In the logic it's a logic problem. And there's more code that needs to be written. I think that's what it looks like. All right. So now these are my in-progress rooms. So now what I want to do is I want to go through each in-progress room, and I want to check to see if uh, if room dot segment extends. I'm going to say return true. I'm going to return false here. And 
And this is going to do two things. It's going to return true if it extends, but it's also going to extend the room. I know some people get nervous when you've got a function that kind of does two things like that, but uh, I'm feeling it. I'm going to do it. So we can argue about that. And actually, I don't want to argue about it, but what I want to do is I want to, if, if you've got a compelling reason for me to change it and a great idea, I'll take it. That's, that's where I'm at. Okay, so now we need to do, we need to check to see, we need to go through our segments. Really, we need the last segment because that's really what we're looking for here. So, segments dot, do I get a last in here? Last or default? That should give me a null if it's got nothing, I think, right? Let me say last segment, that. And then I want to come in and I want to say, hey, if last segment dot matches room segment, then we're going to do two things. We're going to return true and we're going to say segments dot add room segment. Anybody else's mind getting a little blown from all this? I'm like, uh, I'm like barely hanging on here. I feel like I'm treading water to, to, with this logic. Hey, um, Mark. Yeah. 44 rooms, D&D &D hotel. Yeah. Need to check if it is null. Check what? Segment in stands. Where am I, where's my null check needing to be? Not there. Segment's last or default. Oh, right here. Thanks. Boom. There it is right there. Okay, so this last segment is null, return false. Yes. Yeah, thanks, Will. That was perfect. That's just what I needed. Um, just as I was talking about how my mind is, I was treading water, Will was like, no, you're underwater. Let me lift you up. Um, speaking of uh, being underwater, dare I play the Frackberg? We haven't seen Frackberg here. We'll let the little Frackberg shows up. We'll see it. Genesis 7, I'm so looking forward to finishing your uh, fanfare. It's going to be awesome. I think you're going to love it. I'm like, uh, I'm really enjoying it so far. Okay. Segment extends there. I think this is done. And it feels like the code is pretty good. Let's run it again and see if we have a serious drop in our counts of rooms, in our room count from 44 down to something like 15. Oops, I forgot to set a breakpoint. There's where I want my breakpoint right there. Let's try again. Let's uh, kill it and run it. Give me a number like 15. 17! Sweet! Do we have 17 in this thing? Where is it? Do we have 17? We have 17 rooms, I think, kids. Look at that. Boom! Boom! Did not get my comeuppance today. Only three hours of sleep, kids. And we wrote some code that worked. I have to get out of here. I got stuff I got to do. I would, I would, you know, certainly be much happier uh, continuing to code or, and or taking a nap. Oh, so many good programmers out there right now. I'm going to send you to Clark I.O., to Brian Clark. We're going to send you over to him. Um, great, great uh, live coders out here uh, that you can go... Uh, uh, you can go see, but uh, we'll go rate it. Yeah. Well, Ben, it says, I love it when a plan comes together, even without Rory. Guys, tell Brian I said hi. I got to uh, move on. I, I'm not going to have time to watch the stream. Um, and we'll see you uh, tomorrow. Boom goes the dynamite. That's right. Boom. Yeah. Awesome. Talk to you guys later. <laughs>